So good morning, everybody. This is the last day of a phenomenal conference, and um, we do know that at the end of a conference, people tend to leave. But nevertheless, the content and the presenter for today is amazing. And so I'm oh, privileged. Yeah, my you. name is Lovina Bonte. Um, I run after school programs in the city of Philadelphia for Episcopal Community Services. So we have seven OST sites um, after school and summer camp. Um, and we reach between 500 to 1,000 youth every year. Okay? And so I'm, I came today for the session. I signed up to facilitate and just to make sure that you were comfortable and had everything that you need, Dana, because you do amazing work in the social and emotional learning field. And so I'm, I'm privileged to just be able to reach a pipe. I appreciate so, that. Thank you. What I thought to do, um, Dana Bowser was born in Brooklyn, New York. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> So Cabby and Poo is with the Franklin Institute of Philadelphia. He's from Brooklyn, New York as well. Okay. Um, so she attended um, Performing Arts High School in New Jersey and made her way to Philadelphia to attend Temple University, which is awesome. Okay. <laughs> she has a bachelor's degree in secondary foreign language education from Temple University, as well as a master's degree in social work from Temple University. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> she take her education serious. I do. You're not, you're not done yet. Done yet. <laughs> okay. She is currently studying at Newman University, working towards her doctorate degree in education leadership. Wow. Go ahead. Thank you. Me. Thank you. Dana <laughs> is a proud member of Seda Phi Beta. So That's right. <laughs> Incorporated Kappa Omega Seda chapter. Um, she grew up as a um, performing artist, a writer, a model participating in pageants and competitions. And we see why she's such a beautiful oh, woman. Thank you. See, I'm not prepared for all of <laughs> So, and we see that she's very humble too, so we love that. From the time she was a little girl, Dana has always had a given heart and always wanted to give back. She started volunteering at an early age with organizations such as the ARC. She also put, um, she also put together food and clothing drives to help feed the homeless. Wonderful. She continues to do this 40 years later. She's working to feed the homeless and, and clothe the homeless. Dana has been working in the field of education, counseling, and human services for over 25 years. Um, they, she's currently serves as a social emotional learning coordinator at Chestnut Upland School District. She has a passion for working with people and helping people. Dana took her love of the arts and brought it to um, the passion of working with um, children in the Chester Upland School District. Okay. Um, Dana took her love of the arts and brought it to the Chester Upland School District where she volunteered her time and recently worked with students from um, the STEM Academy in Chester High School and successfully debuted Chester's, she's got, um, Chester's Got Talent, which is amazing. Dana continues to be a Zumba instructor, <laughs> okay? <laughs> where many where guys, a Zumba <laughs> instructor, where she teaches classes in person and virtually and participates in fundraising and charity events for um, causes including the March of Dons and Alzheimer's Foundation. In her free time, Dana has a free time. <laughs> <laughs> her, a lot of time with her 17 year old son, Justin. Amazing. His, her significant other, her parents, whom she loved dearly, her friends, and her sobers. I'm going to say that about Ada Corporation. Dana enjoys doing volunteer work and community service along with fundraising and advocacy, especially with the agency which she is so passionate about the March of Thrones. So I will walk away. Okay. And I wish you to be a day there, but welcome. Thank you so much. And congratulations on all your time. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you guys so much. All right. Woo! I feel like I'm back on stage again. No, I'm spotlight. <laughs> spotlight. Yes, it's a humble experience. But thank you all for being here. I hope you've had a wonderful conference so far. This is amazing for all of us to come together. Uh, Melvina, thank you so much for yeah. such a wonderful introduction. Yeah. I'm happy to be here today to talk about social emotional learning. So before we get started, 
I always do this when I start group, whether it's during school, after school, when I'm working with the athletes or whatever. So I'm gonna go around the room really quickly and I want you to give me one word, one emotion of how you are feeling right now. I'm putting you on the spot. Inspired. Inspired. Empowered. Empowered. Curious. Curious. Excited. Excited. Yeah. And I'm also, I feel enthusiastic and um, grateful to be here with you all today. And I think that's really important to start with that, even in classrooms or after school programs, because we don't necessarily know how a student or an adult or a staff is feeling at the moment. And we might gauge where we're going or how we talk to that person or how we re, uh, how we um, you know converse with that person based on how they're feeling. A lot of times we do not do that. Okay. Now a little bit of interaction. We're only going to take about three or four minutes to do this because I want to stick to what we have planned for today. But if you go inside your folder, everybody have a folder. Mm -hmm. ah. I want you to take out the first little activity. Aha, uh -huh. you got one? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, so this is just a little icebreaker and no, we're not gonna sit here and we're not playing for you know $200 prizes, but there's a purpose for this. With me, there's a purpose for everything. So take out the get to know you bingo. I'm gonna give you about two or three minutes. Yes, you're gonna get up and move around. And I want you to go up to each person and just kind of communicate with them and you know have them put their initials on something that applies to them. Okay? You got it? All right, ready, set, go. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Darren. Hi, Darren, I'm Phyllis. Nice to meet you, Phyllis. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you. So good. That's right. See, I prefer that. And I'm going to gauge, and you know, I have a whole bunch of slides, but I'm going to gauge it off of our group because I like to gear it toward what we want to learn and what we want to talk about. So I have one question. What was my purpose for that activity? Get to know each other. Yes. And what else? Building relationships. Yes. And what else? Connection. Thank you. Keyword, connection. That's one of my favorite words. So some of us may know each other, some of us have never seen each other, but a simple activity like that gets us to talking, it's an icebreaker, and it's starting to build connection. You can do that in staff meetings, you can do it with students, you can do it in a group, like when you're giving a presentation, whatever. But the bottom line is, what can we do to start that initial connection and conversation? And this is something so simple. I saw you guys laughing. You found things that you had in common. Um, mm -hmm. And think about it from a staff and student perspective, whether it's an in-school or out-of-school program, right? If I just stand in front of you and start talking about a topic, how much more effective is it if we found something that we have in common, yeah. right? So that was the point of that. All right, so here we go into the nitty gritty. So what is social emotional learning? The funny thing is, this term did not exist forever. It's a very popular term right now, right? But what happened was, I started teaching in the late 90s in North Philadelphia at William Penn High School. Oh, wow. It was my first job straight out of Temple and I was 21 years old and I had students that were three years younger than me, okay? So I had to discover within myself why I was there, what my purpose was. It was obviously my passion and I needed to get that across to my students. And my goal was not just to see my students as a class, but to get to know each of them individually, to observe them, their affect, their faces, their reactions, find out about them. He's on the basketball team, she runs track, you know, and build that relationship because you will get so much further in life with your students when you build that relationship. And I'm gonna tell you a little story about that later in regards to a specific student. So as we know, social emotional learning is 
has all these different components, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, social awareness, and self-awareness. But the thing about it is, it happens everywhere, right? Not only does it happen, or should it happen in schools during the day, which a lot of the time it does not happen, it should trickle into the community, it should trickle into family and community partnerships, into outside of school programs. A lot of what you've been hearing and learning at this conference is an after school program, an out of school time program is a second home for these children. And if we don't have social emotional learning and if we're not equipping our students with these skills, then we want to make sure that they're going down the right path in life. Okay. <laughs> So this is gonna help them and like I said, build them with skills in regards to moving through life, not just in schools, but developing their attitudes, healthy identities, managing their emotions, achieving personal and collective goals, empathy. That was a big word that was happening within here. Making responsible decisions. And when I talk more about the curriculum that we use at Chester Upland School District, you'll understand why I chose this particular curriculum. And I just want to say, one of the um, representatives from the curriculum was supposed to be here today, but unfortunately she had a um, medical emergency. So I'm going to be representing, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to play dual roles here. I, I could keep you all day talking about this, but. So. Benefits. Why social emotional learning? Okay. Like I said, even before the term social emotional learning existed, it's been around forever. You care about a student, you care about a person, you see them as their whole self and not just the face. You know them by name. You start to learn information about their family, what they like, what they dislike, what they're involved in, and so on and so forth. So decades of research show that social emotional learning there's improvement in students' social and emotional skills, attitudes, relationships, decline in students' anxiety, behavior plans, and substance abuse, right? And long-term improvements in students' skills, attitudes, pro-social behavior, and academic performance. How and what does social emotional learning have to do with academics? Any ideas? The only thing I... I'm so new to this, that's why I can't That's do this. great. So no, no, no. Yes, I'm absolutely. So I'm just kind of like verbally processing. Yes, please. You know? um, but I'm, I'm imagining that if a student is not in an, in a, an emotional place, yes. in the right or proper or whatever, however you want to call it, emotional space, learning might be hindered or or the opposite. They, they, if they're in a good emotional place, learning might be Thank you. Better. And if you're yeah. new to this, kudos to you because you got it. You got it dead on. So imagine this. All right, everybody close their eyes for a minute. I, I want you to put yourself in this, this student's face. Here you have a student. He comes from a single family home. He has four siblings that are younger than him. He has to get them up because mom is working two or three jobs. He has to get them ready in the morning, drop them off at school. He has, um, he has to deal with certain situations. His little brother is sick. His little brother needs to stay home from school, but mom has to go to work because how are they gonna put food on the table, okay? But he needs to get to school because he doesn't want to get in trouble for truancy and he's a really important math test today. So he gets up at five o'clock in the morning, gets the kids ready, trying to take care of his little brother. Mom is checking in to make sure everything's okay, right? There, there was a, an issue on the way of taking his brother to school because his brother was late. And then he finally gets to class, but guess what? He's late. The first thing that happens is the teacher says, why are you late? You know you had an important test to take and not in a nice way, okay? You put yourself in that student's shoes and you think about how that makes you feel that particular morning. You were doing everything, and I get goosebumps when I'm talking about this, because you never know what somebody is going through. That goes for the students and that goes for the staff that you work with, family members, whomever. So exactly. 
this little guy had an important math test, but he has 10,000 other things that are going on in his mind. How is he supposed to focus on doing this when he's worrying about his mom missing work because his brother's sick and they're not going to be able to eat tonight? All right? That's social emotional learning, ladies and gentlemen. Now, here's the cool thing. Not just children, but adults benefit from it as well. So teachers, and not just teachers, staff, mentors, who possess strong social and emotional competencies are more likely to stay in the classroom or in programs longer because they're able to partner more effectively with students and address challenging behaviors. One of the main causes of burnout. Listen, let's keep it real. Education is not the same thing as what it used to be years ago. The respect factor is different. You have teachers calling out more frequently, right? And what happens is, is teachers are getting burnt out because they're trying to cover classes. They're not getting prep periods. You know, after school programs, there might be call outs and we all have to come together. But unless we understand this process, it's not going to be successful. Statistically significant associations between social emotional learning skills in kindergarten and key young adult outcomes across multiple domains of education, employment, criminal activity, substance abuse, and mental health. We all know that so many of our students and adults turn to substance abuse because they don't know how to cope. It makes me feel better. It relaxes me. That is not the way to go, but imagine in a perfect world, which doesn't exist, but in your perfect world, where we're teaching these skills and we're having these real life conversations with these students, with these youth, and the trajectory of their life changes from one simple thing, okay? Now, positive action. I need you to put on your, uh, your, your big voice here. I want you to repeat after me, everybody. You feel good about yourself when you do positive actions. And there is a positive way to do everything. There's a positive way to do everything? Actually, there is. It's all about mindset. And the thing I love about positive action, there's nothing wrong with PBIS and reward systems and things like that because students get excited about that, right? That's that extrinsic reward, that extrinsic feeling. But how awesome is it when you ask a student who helps another student who dropped their books on the floor or in an after school program, they forgot their snack and they share their snack. I really like what you just did. How did that make you feel? when you shared that with the person? Or how did that make you feel when you picked those books up? And ask the other person, how did that make you feel that they helped you? We're not giving them extrinsic only rewards. It's that intrinsic feeling. That's what positive action teaches. When you do positive actions, you feel good about yourself, okay? Now, I will show you some of this if you want to see it. It's, um, it's basically a, nope, it went past it. I don't know why. But it was an introductory video. What I'll do is I'll give you the website because I don't want to take too much time out on positive action about the curriculum. If you go to positiveaction.net, then you'll be able to watch the introductory video. It talks about the curriculum, but I'd rather talk about it myself because <laughs> I've experienced this. These are, everybody likes to see evidence, right? Everybody likes to see evidence when they're talking about different curriculums and things of that nature. So when it comes to positive action, as you can see, there's a lot of evidence that backs up the curriculum, a lot. So I just wanted to show this up here, not to say that we just chose any old program. So a little bit about what we did at Chester Upland School District, and it's at, yes, it's implemented in schools, but we're also implementing it after school as well, and I wanted you to understand this. So it was rolled out across the district in the 22-23 school year. I've only been with the district less than two years, guys. I started in February of 22, so this February will be two years. So I had a task ahead of me, but I'm so passionate about this work that to me, I just jumped right in and started getting at this. 
So positive action, besides based on the philosophy, is based on the thoughts, actions, and feelings circle. Okay? So thoughts, actions, feelings, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and you'll see about that. These positive action lessons, touch, they touch on meaningful topics and simultaneously open the room for discussion and relationship building organically. Organically. Let's not get right into math today. Let's not get right into English today. Let's not start doing homework and after school programs right away. Let's talk. Let's have meaningful conversations. Let's connect. So here we go. This is the thoughts, actions, feelings circle. It could be positive or negative. Let me explain this. It's a pattern. How many of us, and be honest, have ever made a decision based off of emotion? <laughs> All the time, right? So this teaches you, I know we always hear it all the time, think before you act, think before you act, but it actually teaches you how to think about what you're feeling, act based off of what you're feeling, and then it's a whole revolving circle. So I'll give you an example. Girl fights are becoming more and more popular. Girls, they just, it's, it's emotion, it's so many different things at all different ages. If they're feeling upset because of a situation, one of the first things they might do is go up to another person and start some words back and forth, right? However, if we equip them with the skill to think about it and talk it through with someone that they trust prior to acting on it, then we just turn the negative circle into a positive circle. It could have ended up in a really bad situation. But now that we've worked on building relationships and we're equipping them with these skills, what's happening is the students are coming to us more, telling us what's going on, and we're being proactive rather than reactive. And I'm not here, I'm not a salesperson for positive action. I'm talking about it because I've seen it unravel in front of my eyes. It has been a phenomenal thing. So there are, six, there are six different units in the positive action curriculum. And I'm going to just go through this very quickly because you can find out information. I want to have more. I want you to hear from the students. They, they're not here today, but I have them on video because I think as we've said, when we just saw that phenomenal youth panel, it's so important to hear from the youth and what they believe. It's nice to hear what the adults think, but this is for our youth and we have to remember that. So you have the philosophy and the thoughts, actions, feeling circle, physical and intellectual health, social and emotional self-management, social and emotional self-competence, social and emotional self-honesty, like understanding this is how I'm feeling. This is the truth about me. This is who I really am because so many times we wear a mask and we pretend to be somebody that we're not or we want to fit in. So this is how we act. And then self, uh, social and emotional self-improvement. There's a whole thing on goal setting. And I visited with, I think it was a third grade class not too long ago, and they were doing a lesson on goals. And hearing them say things like, I want to design my own t-shirts. But not just that, how are you going to get there? You're in third grade. If you start working on this now, you could be one of the youngest entrepreneurs we ever had. So we build on their passions and we build on their dreams. <coughs> this is what a kit looks like. It is designed by grade level, okay? And there are 130 lessons in pre-K, 140 in K through six, and just about the same in grades seven through 12. And basically, there are five to 10 minute, I would say an average of five to 20 minute lessons. Everything is scripted. There's an instructor's manual, you open it. I don't care if you've never taught a day in your life or never ran a group, all you have to do is read. But I do say, read the lesson before you do it. But the thing about it is, like in the younger, in the younger kids, you have puppets, you have interactive games and things like that. 
And then as they get older in high school, you have real intimate conversations. Like lesson one, chapter one, who am I? Self-identity. Where are you right now? What have you been through? Really, really good stuff. These are some of the topics that we cover. Like I said, number one, self-awareness, self-affirmation. Um, Brian Majors talked a lot about self-affirmation. It's so important, and you're gonna see in a little bit how uncomfortable it is to be comfortable. Um, and it's really interesting. The, uh, we talked about the intrinsic rewards. The second to last one is one of my favorites. Appreciation and gratitude notes. So many of us walk around every day not feeling appreciated at all. Just a little compliment or a little note or a little something goes such a long way. And you'll see that from these kids when I show the video. All right, go into your folder again, please. Let me check time, 11.35, all right, we're good. The next activity you will find in there should be two hands. This is a very powerful activity, and we don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but I do want you to do at least one thing for me. So take out your little crayons and pencils and everything else that you may have. Holding on and letting go. Everybody hold up their two hands. One hand, we're gonna hold on. The other hand, we're gonna let go. So shake it off. Everybody shake it off, okay. So this is what I want you to do. In the one hand that you have for holding on, what are th some things that are happening in your life right now that you're really proud of, that you want to hold on to? It could be a person's name, it could be an activity, it could be a thing, it could be an emotion, okay? I want you to write some things down. You can do this with all age levels, including little ones. You have them draw pictures. I've had hands look like so colorful and so artistic and amazing, and hearing them explain it is phenomenal. And then in the other hand, the letting go one, what are some things that are happening in your life right now? If there's this feeling that's been lingering over you, or if there's a toxic person in your life, or if there's something that you've been engaged in that you're not proud of, what are some things that you would like to let go of. So I'm gonna give you not a lot of time, but take about maybe three minutes or so, because I can talk about this all day, like I said. And some, some students and some adults have even utilized colors to represent how they're feeling. Really, really cool stuff. We sharing this? We can. We don't have to. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's just for you. Anytime, anytime I do, yeah, if it's personal, that's fine. Anytime I do a group or anytime we do something like this, I always ask if anybody feels comfortable sharing, more, you're more than happy to, but it's mainly for you to hold on for you, to look at it and to remind yourself that today I made this pledge that these are things that I'm proud of and I wanna hold on to, and these are things that are going on in my life that I really need to let go of. How hard is it to let go? It's really hard to let go. Some things easier than others, but it's hard to let go. All right. I know you can go on probably doing this forever. You might need multiple hands, which is fine. <laughs> but doing an activity like this in any classroom, in any out of school time at a program, it really teaches you a lot about people, but more importantly, it teaches you about yourself. That's where self-awareness comes in because a lot of times we know these things, but for us to actually come to terms with it and put it down on paper opens up a whole lot of doors because you're seeing, you're going through the action of thinking about it writing about it and it's almost like the thoughts actions and feeling circle you're thinking about it the act is you're writing it down and then how does it make you feel afterwards writing this stuff down so i want to ask you guys how did that make you feel writing it down yes i felt like once i wrote it down i had to really commit to it yeah 
So I was like, okay, I know I want to let go of this, but I know it's going to be hard. And yeah. Sad, but I was like, I felt like I had enough self-awareness to know that like writing down will actually make me be a little more committed. There you go. Know. I like that. Almost like a contract without it being a contract. To myself. Yeah. yeah. Anybody else? Definitely got a little emotional thinking about the things that I need to let go. That I like really, really hard. Um, I had a moment of like not wanting to write it down because um, I'm so glad you asked about the share out <laughs> because um, you know I don't have to share it, but yeah. like just even writing it down and being like, oh my god, is someone gonna see that? Right. It's an embarrassing piece. Yeah. Right. It, it's just yeah. It was it was definitely emotions. Just, yeah. Just but the other thing is that this teaches us is we all go through things. It may not be exactly the same thing but we're experiencing similar emotions and we can even connect on that level, yeah. right? So, good. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys taking the time to, to do that. All right, this is the sad stuff. I don't wanna say sad, but data collection. I'm big on data and so is our school district. So we implemented a pre-survey, a pre-survey before you know, we, we started the, the social emotional learning curriculum. And let me just say that anything can influence somebody's response, right? Because we don't know, we're so, like social emotional learning, you don't know what they just went through five minutes ago. So that can, that can affect the response. So we have three different surveys, K through two, or pre-K through two, three to five, and then six through 12 for secondary. These are just some sample questions. And this is real life data. So for example, pre-K through two, second grade, we're talking like four-year-olds to seven-year-olds maybe. I get mad or angry. Look how many of them said yes. 70%. We're talking our babies. Our babies are getting angry. What does this have to do with social emotional learning? If they don't know how to deal with that anger, guess what's gonna happen? It's going to and seventy percent is huge. That's a huge number. Grades three through five. I lose control of my anger when I have an argument with others. Only sixteen percent said never. That means, let me do the math correctly. At least eighty-four percent total said most of the time or sometimes I lose control of my anger. So now these babies that we just talked about get that get angry. Now they're a little bit older and guess what's happening? They didn't learn the skills that they needed to deal with this, so they're losing control. I worry about something bad happening to me. Only 34% said never. Think about that for a minute, let it marinate. These are third through fifth graders worrying about bad things happening to them as children. Is that what they should be worrying about? No, they should be worrying about having fun and playing and getting their homework done, not bad things happening to them. Grade six through 12. Now we're at, as he said, you know, the last quarter of our education. This one right here. Some things have hurt me so much, physically and emotionally, that I do not want to remember them. Only 27% said never. I don't wanna cry right now. That makes me so sad. Ladies and gentlemen, this is reality. This is what our children are going through. If they don't have that trusting adult, if they're not given these skills to be able to get through life, where are they going to be? I can control my feelings, okay? 43% said most of the time, but then 49% sometimes, and 7% said never. That 7% that can never control their feelings, what's gonna happen with them? What's gonna happen with them? And this is why we need social emotional learning at home with the families in schools, in every single classroom, and also outside of school. If you get these skills from the time you wake up in the morning, from the parental figure, to the time you walk in the classroom, to when you leave, to when you come back home, 
I guarantee you these numbers would change. All right? Now, these are just some, um, I'm gonna go through the different schools in the district really quickly. There goes the hand activity. You see how beautiful that is? That's the teacher, one of the teachers that was doing it. Um, and as you can see, some of the different things on there, hope, focus, love, family. What do I wanna let go of? Perfectionism, regrets for the past, powerful stuff, simple activity, powerful stuff. This is one of our elementary schools. They sit down in morning circle and they, they talk about choice and making right decisions. You see the, the, the thoughts, actions, feelings circles going around. This was one of the lessons that they did. What does it mean to do a positive action and how can it make you feel like a morning thought? It could be done anywhere and everywhere. Just our high school, what are life's big questions when we were talking about who am I, different things. And this right here, we're gonna dive into a minute. This is actually my office, one of my offices, and where we do lunch group. And you're gonna hear more about that and how it's affected those students. This was really powerful, and you'll see this. We're gonna, this is another activity we're gonna do. Students hold on to so many things. This gave them the opportunity to express themselves, and then you will hear from them what some of them are. But there's an activity called, I wish my teacher knew. But it can be flipped for staff. I wish my students knew. It can be used for athletes. I wish my coaches knew. Or I wish my athletes knew. And when I did a training at one of the elementary schools, I wish my coworker knew. Something as impactful and small as this, I mean, it's, it's crazy the type of results that you may see. These are examples. One of the schools created a compliment corner. It was really cool. It was a whole big piece of paper with little post-it notes and you just write something nice for somebody and stick it on the, the wall. And then people walk by and they read it and it makes them smile. And then we did the, the letters of gratitude, like different things like that. And I want to move into, I don't know if we're going to have time to do the entire videos of, but I at least wanted to show you some of them. Get in it, Shakir. Oh, I was trying to get out of her way. <laughs> You're good, that's right there. You're very welcome. Thank you. Oh. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate you too. Come on in. Hey, George. Hey, baby. We're going to go to the bathroom. Aww. Oh, thank you, baby. I appreciate you. Aww. Hang up. That's what I'm talking about. I like the grizzly bear. Wow. All of you are big bears. Wow. Oh, my. That is so scary. 
Susie was not only feeling scared, but she was unhappy. Got to sleep. What do you think happens, Raja, when we just don't get enough sleep at night? Sleep all day. You sleep all day. What else, Amari? You stay up all night. If you stay up all night, you don't get enough rest. What happens if you don't get enough rest? What happens? Say it one more time. Oh, you don't want to go to school. Yes, and, and guess what? And sometimes if I don't get enough sleep, I don't want to go to work. Being good leaders. I love that. Excellent. I agree with all of the things you all said. Very good. All right. So another name for that positive action circle is our what? Happy circle. Let me see your smiles. All right. Okay. So sometimes we have positive thoughts. Sometimes we have negative thoughts. That's normal and that's okay. All right. But we need to remember to use that traffic light. And we're going to look at that in a minute to think about and stop and think about what we should do to change any kind of negative thoughts into what? Good thoughts. Good thoughts. Uh-huh. Good. Now, when we think positive, then we what? Act positive. Very good. Let me see your actions. Good. Very good. And when you do positive actions, then you have positive what? Feelings. feelings. What kind of positive feelings can we have when we have? Good. What other kind of calm down strategy can we use before we choose? What do you think? Miss Novell? Namaste. Namaste. Let's demonstrate that. Put your palms together. Good. Breathe in, hold it, and out. Strategic way uh, to not offend them first so that they can receive what I'm telling them, but still be able to tell them what it is that's, that's, that we can't accept, uh, you know, as a teammate or as a, as a uh, whatever it is that, that comes up. But it's like, look, man, you know, I just want to tell you this. I'm trying to help you. I don't want to see you fail, but I know this would fail our team if this was to happen. Because, you know, man, it's how it's communication is key in everything. And I think that, you know, if you can learn how to bring stuff to people without letting your emotions get the best of you, uh, and, and then if their emotions get the best of them, you got to still be able to be calm and cool to where you can't let them, you know, let you go there too, because two people going crazy on each other is not going to go well. Oh, that's right. Do we agree? Huh. Yes. All right. Was that was that like a virtual session with multiple yes. other yes. groups from yep. other places yes. chiming in? That's yeah, cool. And they was. were able to ask questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. But we wrote the questions in ahead of time, and then they, they called on us to be able to ask the question. That's so cool. Yeah. Wow. And they would take us off of mute, and then the students would ask questions. It was yeah. really cool. Yeah, so cool. All right, next activity. I'm gonna fly through this because there's there's so much stuff here. I seriously could spend like days talking to you guys about this. This is a really nice one. It's called Give Someone Their Flowers. We always hear the phrase, give someone their flowers while they're still here. What does that mean? We turned it into an activity. So if you look in your um, folder, you'll see a blank flower with petals, right? I can explain to you how this works. And then um, you can take it with you. So the way that this works is, can someone read what it says on the top of the um, the activity sheet? Good, right, give someone their flowers. So the bottom line is there's different ways that you can do this. But personally, in a classroom with staff, uh, out of school time program, this is a great activity. Write your name in the middle of the flower. So you are the core. And we're just gonna do one of these so I can just show you the idea because we'll be here for another 20 minutes doing this and I don't have a lot of time left. What I want you to do, whether you know the person or not, the person next to you or across the room from you, give them your sheet and switch. And I want you to write a compliment about them. It could be a physical characteristic. It could be an emotional or spiritual characteristic. Um, 
a personality trait, just one, because I know we can, you can even write it about yourself if you don't want to get up and move. And then when you're done writing, just switch back. Or if you did it for yourself, take a look at it. Okay, now, switch. Okay, we're still writing. I guess you guys really have to. Now, switch the papers back to the original person. Okay, so everybody has their own paper now, right? Yes. Now, I'm gonna go around the room. I want you to tell me your name. Okay, I want you to say I am and then say your name you and then choose up? choose one thing on the paper and say it out loud. Say I am in front of it. You got it? All right, we're going to start with you. Uh, I, I'm Cabby and uh, I am curious. Okay. Wait, I'm sorry. We give the, we, so I'm supposed to have my own now or the one that I gave to him? You're supposed to have your own. My own. Okay. Yeah. I wrote you about. Switch one, I wrote about one, switch, switch and back. write about each other. Okay. Oh, I wrote. I'm sorry. I did it wrong. That's okay. So I wrote and, about and, him and on my own. Oh, okay. <laughs> so let's just see that. So okay. just switch the name. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> All right. You want to read one more, Cabby? Oh, sure. I'm Cabby and I am smart. Thank you so much. I am smart. It was okay. Smart. Say it with conviction. Go ahead. I am Melvina and I am dedicated. There you go. You want more? I am so sweet. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. So I'm Darren. Uh, you look like you were dressed for success. <laughs> so, no, you have to say, say I. Oh, I, I dress for success. Oh, I dress for success. Um, I take pride in myself. There you go. Good. Good. <laughs> um, I'm Phyllis and I. Love my eyeglasses. So yep. I my eyeglasses. Oh, okay. I, I have snazzy eyeglasses. Yeah. Okay. I got three for nine ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> so, Me it. too. So, it. so that's just an example, guys. Like it's so uncomfortable sometimes, right? But we have to get comfortable with feeling uncomfortable. So for some people, it's hard to say positive things about themselves. So did any of you feel uncomfortable saying that out loud in front of people? Because sometimes people do. But like we talked about throughout the conference, we have to empower ourselves and others. And you get used to it every morning. Practice those positive affirmations. So we did this and I, ha I have them take it with them and they put it in their, their, their room door in the morning. Practice saying it every morning. I am a leader, I am strong, I am powerful then go about your day. Regardless of what happened in the house, regardless of how you're feeling, practice those positive self-affirmations. I love it. No. This, is, this is innovation. I like this activity. Now, this is where you hear from the student. Hello, you guys. My name is Nigel. Everybody know me as Nye. I attend Chester High School, and I also play for the Chester High basketball team. Uh, my name is Amir Robertson. I'm a, I'm a junior here. I attend Chester High School. I'm in the 11th grade and I play for the Chester Clippers football team. Uh, my name is Jamil Gathers. I'm in the 10th grade and I'm part of the athletic department. Here in SEL, Social Emotional Learning, we have a plan called Thoughts, Actions, and Feelings Plan. Um, it basically gets you to think about things before you do it um, so, so that you won't be written them down the line. Um, and today's we're talking about compliments. Um, how a compliment can make someone's day even if you don't know them. Um, you know, because you never know what someone is going through. And that, that one that one thing you say to a person can change their whole day. Um, so yeah, the way so the way our social emotional learning makes me feel it's like it's a group and we all look at each other as family and we should be able to open up to each other about certain things. So I feel as though when I come in here I could just Talk to Ms. Bowser, my my co-classmates about anything that on my mind, and we'll be fine with explaining with each other and opening up to each other, which I like about the group. Yeah. With me, as you know, I play for the basketball team. So when you're on the court and you're going against compete, and compete is going to get frustrating, so you end up going through adversity. And this group helps me overcome that adversity, and you know, put me in a better place that I would be if I, you feel me? did or chose the wrong thought. I can't really like talk. Like, 
What else? Um, I also do live in Tester. That's a bad city and all. And coming here every day, trying to work and do other schoolwork, then trying to play basketball and getting frustrated, it's hard. But this group helped me. That's good. Come here. Come here. Oh, I already worked out. Are you done? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you guys are doing an awesome job. Where are you going to spot? Where are you going to spot? Right, like, Alright, keep going. Did everybody get everybody? Oh no, I didn't get destiny. <laughs> this is oh. awesome. This is awesome, guys. I'm, I'm loving it. Oh, my gosh. The W come for me, not her. Big, 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 on the count of three, everybody is going to turn their plate around. Okay? One, if I can find it. One, two, three. No, don't look yet. Don't look yet. Yeah, you can untie it if you want. You can if you want. Now, what we're gonna go around the room, we talked about what affirmations are, right? saying something, a self-affirmation is saying something about yourself. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the words, I am in front of it. And I want you to read me three things off your plate, okay? We're gonna start with Marcus and go around the room. Go ahead. I am a thorough friend. I am always positive. I am hard worker. Okay. I am amazingly confident, funny, and you're awesome. Okay. I am say I am awesome. I am awesome. There you go. I am getting taller. Wait. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see. <laughs> I'm a great talker. I'm a role model, and I'm good at ball. That's a shout out. Awesome. Good job. I am. A lot of people said they're inspiration, so I am inspiring. I am pretty. I am nice. Nice. I guess it's my turn. So who's gonna hold the camera? I, I got while you, I read brother. it. Okay. If I could, if I could, let me rip this off. All right. I am a leader. I am caring. I am sweet, beautiful, and amazing. That thank you. Yeah. I know. I, I had to end with a bang. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, guys, real quick. I want you to hold these with you. I'm not saying walk around with them. But if there's ever a day where you're starting off the day like that, like you could even take this and hang it somewhere in your room and start and start practicing daily affirmations. Say something positive about yourself because you never know what people think of you. And you might not even know that person, but just like what that quote says, you know, sometimes just a little compliment can make someone's entire day, right? All right, so really cool activity, guys. Really, really cool. So not only is it being done in the schools, it's being out, done outside the schools. And one of the things that I was asked was to work with the athletic teams, which is really cool. Because when you have an athletic team, you have to build trust. You have to build relationships. We can't blame each other for missing a basket or for fumbling a football, right? We have to build each other up and we have to get to know the members of the team. Uh, an athletic team is the same as a classroom, is, same, is the same as a program, is the same as a family. It's all interchangeable. So that was the purpose of this, and I love this quote. 
The strength of a team is in each individual member. The strength of each member is in the team, Phil Jackson. I have to give him credit for that. So this is the girls volleyball team that I work with, just to give you some examples. They came to my office and I did this powerful activity with them that we're gonna talk about in a few minutes, even though we don't have a few minutes. Um, but the bottom line is, the picture up top is very powerful. They are on their way to an away game, and they did an SEL activity on the way to the game. That team has gone from girls fighting with each other and calling each other names to a family. And even, I have been to their games and I watched their games, and even when somebody misses a shot, they cheer each other on. That's what teaches this. You're empowering them, okay? Now, this is the activity, I think it's in there. I think it's the last activity, right? It may say something different at the top. I wish my, I'm not sure which one I gave you, that I wish my student coworkers. Right, coworkers. so remember what I said, it could be used with everything. And the reason why I said that this is so powerful, and some of you asked, do we have to share? You don't have to share. What I say to them, and I've done it with staff, with students, with all different populations, you say to them, this is a safe space. I don't know what's going on in your life. I wanna get to know you, and you need to really get to know yourself. If there is one thing that you could tell me right now about yourself, what would it be? And you have to be able to trust me in order to tell me. All right, I don't want you to make it up, what have you. So the thing that's powerful about this, guys, is I give them examples. And remember the story I was telling you about the, the, the boy that had the four siblings and so on and so forth? I give them that as an example. Like, don't just tell, you can tell me what your challenges, challenges are, what your talents are, what you like to do, but you can also get deep. And I give the example. You can tell me. I wish my teacher knew that I'm responsible for my four younger siblings. And if I get to, work, uh, to school late in the morning, it's not because I don't want to be there. It's because I have so much other responsibility and I wish they would understand that. That's an example. And when I did this with the girls volleyball team, with some of the people in lunch group, and you'll see in a minute that I also did it with the baseball team, some of the things that I heard, I cried. I wish my coach knew that I have dealt with so much loss over the last year that I don't know how to function. I walk around like everything's okay and it's not, but I don't know how to express myself and who to talk to. The next day, I didn't know who wrote it, it was anonymous. I opened up the door for communication and I had boys from different teams coming into my office saying, "Ms. Bowser, do you remember the thing that you read? That was me. In other words, he's saying to me, I want help. Yeah. And the way that I do this, um, like what you were asking Phyllis, so I say, is there anybody that wants to read theirs? And some of them do, like they don't care. And if they don't, if they don't want to read it all, it's fine. I put it to the side. But then what I will do is collect it and mix it up a little bit and just read them out loud without saying the names. So you have no idea who it belongs to, but we can hear what's going on in the room. And you might hear that this person is going through something that you're going through and you have no idea what these people are going through. I did it with staff. Oh my goodness. One of the staffs, one of the new staff said, I wish my coworkers knew that I'm very anxious and nervous because it's my first time setting foot in the classroom and I wish I had some support. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you're giving them that door of opportunity to open up. And it's just a simple, it's a simple, simple activity, but you can get so much out of it. This quote, when students feel safe and supported, they are truly ready and able to learn. Yeah. Kathy, this goes back to what I asked. What does social emotional learning have to do with academics? 
It's right there. Okay? Here's the baseball team when I was working with them, just so you can see. Some of them I know very well. Some of them I didn't know anything about. And now we're like this. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, to close it out, I know we only have five minutes. This was a radio show that we were asked to be a part of and what social emotional learning means to them. And I can sit here and say what it means to me, but what we talked about this whole conference is about our youth. And if we don't listen to them, we're not gonna see any changes. We need to listen to our youth. So hopefully this works. And um, we did pretty good on time. Social emotional learning, definitely in our school. Um, it helps us because we can also talk to Ms. Bowser, also our fellow peers, students, and et cetera. Um, I know personally it helps me because I'm also able to bring it into my, in my relationships and at home and also in my extended family too. Mm -hmm. So it just helps, it just helps a lot. You know, I'm able to talk, I can voice my opinion without being judged. I can sit there and talk to anybody. I can feel open about it. I never have to hold in or feel scared to talk because usually sometimes you can get opinionated. Like I said, people can judge you off of what you're saying or some people might just make fun of you off of the situation. It goes into a lot more than just talking to because me and Ms. Bowser made a very good relationship. She came to the school last year. Nobody knew who she was. So it also goes on to building a relationship. Yep. We went from high fives to saying hi to hugs, to being able to come in her room, sit there, relax when we're stressed out or we're tired or we're exhausted. Right. So it goes into a lot more than just always talking. It goes into relationship making. It makes us want to come to school, feel like we have a safe space to come to. Because, you know, in our city, we're not always a safe outside of school. And it just goes from there. That's my opinion on it. That was powerful, Marcus. Thank you. I'm going to invite Z. Um, to switch seats with you real quick. How do you feel, Z, that social emotional learning um, maybe helps us be in it together more? Well, Social emotional learning, what it is, is is to help build within yourself and foundations with other people. So when you build a foundation, that means to be stable and to have something evolve and grow. And to be in it together, we need a stable foundation that requires trust and well communication. And with communication, it's not just about how you talk, it's about how you listen, your perspective, and the non-judging thing. Because the tendency of us not being together is because we judge one another for actions, how we talk, or, like, reactions to things. So it's like Chester's not safe because of our reactions and our not being able to trust. If I can't trust walking outside at night, I'm not going to go. If I can't trust that this place is safe, I'm not going to want to be around. So it's more so we need to build a strong foundation to be able to be in it together and to want to be able to trust one another because in society – across the U.S., it's a big problem. It really is. So do you feel that learning skills to help you navigate your own emotions is important in establishing safety and trust with others that you know and even that you don't know? Of course. Of course it is because how you act and how you handle yourself, especially when it comes to emotions, is what make people want to be around you, want to be able to trust you. Like, for example, Ms. Bowser, yes, like Marcus said, she came, and it was different, but it's something, it's a safe haven. It's a safe space that was created. So it's more so I feel like my emotions evolved and other students around me have evolved just by me practicing what I work on and helping them, like, it's still been fights, but a lot of people have been able to talk it out, just letting it go, just off of practicing what we were taught, how to talk, how to listen, how to communicate, so how to build trust. Listening, speaking, communication, rapport, trust. Yeah. 
it all in the play. No matter those are skills that you're being explicitly taught. Yes, it's it's all everything, just so that we can be better people and help each other be better people, especially yeah. in our community. Thank you, thank you for that. And I I see I skipped over um, Jamil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I went out of order. Jamil, you want to come and switch with Z? Do you? It's up to you if you have something to add. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Z. So we're talking again here about how the youth um, at Chester High School feel that social emotional learning benefits um, everyone, not just themselves. Um, I definitely say it definitely benefits everyone. Um, I mean, even people that's not in, in the group, I definitely say it definitely has benefit other people. Like, we was talking about how a compliment can make someone's day way better than what it, the way it was going. Like, they can be having a bad day and you don't know it. And you can say, hey, you, you look nice today. That can change someone's day all the way around. So, Jamil, um, giving someone a compliment, was that something you learned to do? And you were, it was explained to you about the importance of that? Yes, um, we, we, that was one of, the, one of the lessons that we learned in, in social emotional learning. I just want to share that with the audience so that we know explicitly that this is, this is an example of something that's included in the curriculum. So, yes, we, uh, the, one, of the, one of the lessons was uh, compliments. Um, that, honestly, compliments can go a long way. Um, like, people may forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Mm, you remember that quote? And also one thing was, uh, another thing is how you talk to people, right? You, I mean, you can have the right intentions, but your tone and how you say it, it completely throw everything off. So tone is an important thing as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Jamil, for that. Um, I wanted to bring on to the screen someone who might not be in the background, but sitting off if, if they want to. Destiny, you want to come up? Do you have anything to add? Come on over. Thanks. Thank we'll, have you. You, we'll have you switch real quick. Hey, Destiny. Hi. So let's talk a little bit about this social emotional learning. Share with our audience um, what you want to say about that. Um, social and emotional learning at Chester High, I feel like me personally, I'm sorry, me personally, it helped me a lot because last year before we did it, started it this year, I was like, I had a lot of temper in me and it wasn't, it was like a bad thing. So this year when we brought it there, it helped me a lot. I had, was able to express my feelings. I wasn't really getting in trouble as, as much. I got more. I got into things more, um, able to help out other people. People felt safe coming to talk to me instead of them being so scared of me because of how I was last year. So it benefited you and that it helped you get stay out of trouble a little bit more, but I also hear that it really benefited others as well. Yes. Which is what this is all about, being in it together. I didn't want to cut you off. Is there anything else that you wanted to say? No. But I just wanted to say that even before this term was around, I was doing it before it was yeah. such a thing. Okay. Yeah. And yep. there, there was a high, I just need two minutes to tell you this. There was a high school student that I had my first year of teaching and he was the class clown. And he would always come in and laugh and what have you. One day he came in and he was a completely different person. His face was flat, flat affect. I knew something was wrong. And that's where those connections come in. I said to him, are you okay? Mm. And he just looked at me. Mm. That night after work, I went to a Hallmark store and I bought an encouragement card. I wrote, regardless of what you're going through, please know that somebody cares, mm. okay? I don't wanna cry, but I'm probably gonna cry. So get your tissues. <laughs> I found him first period, I gave him the card. I said, read it when you want. He comes to me during his lunch period and he starts bawling on my shoulder and he hugged me 
And he was like, they called me Senorita because I was a Spanish teacher. Um, and he said, Senorita, well, they would say Senorita, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't have that. He was like, how did you know? And I said, because I could tell, because I watch you. And he said to me, this is a really hard time of the year for me because this is when my father was killed. Now, on top of that, I lost touch with him through the years. And a couple of years ago, he found me on social media. He said to me, you have no idea that because of you, I'm still here today and I'm fighting. I have stage four cancer. He said, that card, I still have it. And nobody knew what I was going through but you. About a year or two later, he passed away. But knowing that this student got through a lot more than he probably would have because he had that one person he connected to and cared just makes it all worthwhile. So I just encourage you, whether you make a difference in one person's life or in 100 people's lives, we're in this for a reason. We're in this career and this field for a reason. And I say all that to say, the term social emotional learning didn't exist back then, but that's exactly what it is. And there you have it. So, in closing, if you could take anything away, it's the importance of connections, relationships, not knowing what somebody's going through, and listening. And social emotional learning is vital in all walks of life, from children to adults, in the classroom, outside of the classroom, on the court, on the field, in the homes, and out in the communities. And please always remember that there is a positive way to do everything. Thank you guys.